Bill and Dave are on the lam. Not a scam. Grab your cam. Could be in the traffic jam or maybe in Siam. Bill and Dave are hiding out. What's their route? Won't give out. Searching Brussels for a sprout. They rarely mill a boat. Bill and Dave are on the lam. On a tram in Rotterdam. Don't you forward them. You spam. They're clearly on the lam. So quiet. Well, it, it's um, we'll, we'll just tell you up front, and it's another breakfast episode. So. Yeah, so just skip this one if you're <laughs> averse to those. Uh, yeah, wait till next. Don't bother week. yourself. Listen to last week's. <laughs> this is um, yeah. Well, just we, what we prefer is that you just get yourself a nice. Why don't you go to a restaurant and eat breakfast? Well, you're listening to this time, yeah. Yeah, well, all right, fine. How far ahead are we in the uh, We are pretty far ahead. We, uh, we just posted uh, in this, the way this calendar sits, we posted number 61, but we have up to number 70 in the can. So we're like nine ahead. This would so, be this would be number 71. This so one. we're like two months ahead? Yeah, about, about two months ahead. Well, let's talk about two months ago when the great flood of 2013. <laughs> <laughs> I wondered why you wanted that rubber yeah, point. Yeah. <laughs> I guess we should, start, we, should start, right. we should cover that before we start the episode. Um, yeah, it was um, it, it was about two months ago. We're at an undisclosed, undisclosed breakfast location, but it, it, it's still the talk of the town. Yeah, uh, after, after, even, all this, even after all two months this time, after all the flood waters have dried up. I think in the past we have referenced that, that uh, Elwood and Marseilles are two places that we hang out in a lot. I think we have referenced that. Yeah. So, you know, pick your, take your choice. Which, which is right next to a major yeah, one, river? One is, one is <laughs> a river town, one is a creek town. <laughs> Well, well, crick town, as we discussed. What, what I've learned is I would never, you know, move in a home near a creek or a river. Mm -hmm. I, I used to think, wow, how great, but just yeah. seeing the devastation that can happen. I mean, even uh, a house, if you're just a, a house that has a basement, then you may away your undisclosed location is way up on a bluff, but you, could, you still have gotten little trickles of water inside yeah. that. You, and can you imagine? Because Marge's mom has a basement, and she got a lot of water. Yeah, she got a lot of water. But she's not on the end. There, there's no, I mean. There's no river near or creek near her. Or, and she's on rel relatively high ground. Mm -hmm. A person who's living right next to a river, I don't think you got a chance, though. Uh, and the, uh, the girl that you saw at the post office here? Yes. What's the name? Her house. Oh, no. Yeah. She's been posting pictures. Of oh, no. What, like up to, up to the window? Yeah. 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 So, yeah. 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 she's, she's, she's one of the po pictures she put in. She goes, Yeah, I can almost see my patio again. Oh, my <laughs> oh, I mean, <laughs> is she still going to be able to live there? I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, it, yeah. I don't know. Well, because, oh, because she also posted, because of, I don't understand this exactly, but most people here can't get flood insurance unless it's through the government. Are you familiar with this? Yeah. There's, there's some, some, some weird thing like it, that. Yeah, it's like, well, that's maybe, kind of based on, um, maybe what, if they, I know there's been a lot of issues about if people choose to live on a flood plain. That's the word I was looking for. They won't. Oh, okay. Give you the insurance. Yeah, Maybe they, you have to go through the. They've got the insurance companies have these topographical maps that show whether your home is on a floodplain or not. And if you're in there, you're screwed. Yeah, you can't if, if you want to build, you have to pay. I mean, I, you know, I've gone from, you know, the home that we're in now to, to getting, you know, trickles of water, not, not nothing, no standing water, nothing, nothing that can't be mopped up quickly. But I've gone from that apprehension to, you know. Thousands of dollars of recording equipment just scattered on the floor down there. You know, it's like it's, so. I'm, I feel fairly confident and fortunate that uh, the house that we live in is relatively. Did you, when you guys were in the market for a house, when you and Wendy were house shopping, did that come into your decision making about how high up you guys would be? It didn't. 
And that's that an amazing, the, yeah, yeah, the, great that's piece, that's of, right, luck. piece right. of luck. Because right. yeah. I wondered, because it wouldn't be, you know, uh, knowing you, I would think, it, if it occurred to you at all, that'd be like a, something like, yeah, I want to find a, want to find a place on higher ground. It wasn't. No, I yeah. probably would have been the exact yeah. numbskull opposite. Yeah. Like, oh, how great oh, would it be to live on next, the next oh, to the yeah. river? Yeah, it would be. Yeah, I think so. Um, I'm going to have the. Um, I think the strawberry crepes. I know you want yard work. He gets yard work. He does not know how to do yard work. I'd like two eggs are easy, and um, wheat toast, <laughs> and a side order of bacon, and <laughs> a large cranberry juice. And would you mind putting us on the supper chair? Everyone? No, no, just us two. Okay, yeah. we're together. Okay. okay. We're ready. If you don't mind. No. Okay, let's go to the farm. Can I get the, the cheese on with, with um, what type of cheese do you have? American Swiss mozzarella. Swiss mozzarella. First time in his life he's going to cut grass. Uh, and toast. He went one time west. Wheat. He came back to the east. Okay. Right. Warm up on your coffee? That'd be great. Yeah, you can have me off too. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I notice you're doing the dancing, the migraine dance. Right, yeah, yeah, it's, it's probably have a sip. Well, I hope you enjoy it. So. It's been, the recording schedule has been uh, pick it up, which is good. Um, but it's, you know, Wendy's alarm goes off at 6.15, and I usually get up with her mm -hmm. on recording nights, as tonight is a recording night. Um, I will try to take a nap, but it doesn't always happen. So I, so I well, you need something. Yeah. 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 Do you, is this going to be at your house, or do you have to go? You no, know, it's up in Chicago. You go up to Chicago. This is going to be a... A fun one. These Ooh, guys are. Uh, I put the uh, the keyboard players. He, he listed, you know, what's going on tonight, mm -hmm. and uh, up on, on Facebook. And he, he put uh, because to give you an idea of the type of guy he is. His name is his name is Jim Baker. He listed um, because there's been people concerned about their conceptualism or something within their group, that they, for one night only, they're going to have um, a sculptor there that is going to have um, sculptor. metal metal things uh, throughout scattered throughout the room connected by cables through one collective continuity thing. He, he says he, he thinks it's a, it's a it's about the isolation and connectivity of the of people. Oh. The sculptor's name is Zikowski. Oh, cool. Yeah. That's what he's yeah. how he's describing my microphones, <laughs> and that they will be recording oh, tonight. I, see. Oh, I, see. I get it. Because I, I, I was yeah, reading whoa. this and I thought, oh, how am I going to work around this? What is this? And then I'm thinking, oh, what if there's electronics involved? And it's, and it's Messing up. Like I was just ra thinking that same thing. I know, like, there's going to be wires. I know there's going to be radio interference of the mics, and then I'm like, is it Kowski? I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, hey, what a coincidence. That's cool. Yeah. That's David Zikowski, too. Wow. Well, that's pretty clever. But, but I'll be doing, they, they play every Monday at the, at the Beat Kitchen. Oh, and then oh I'll be, okay. I'll be okay, doing sure. one next month. Um, and then I, I would recommend coming out to see them. I've only seen them perform once. It's, it's all improvised, um, but it's it's very interesting okay. stuff. Yeah, pick up pick up a, pick up some uh, info on the big kitchens. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I checked I checked out one of the, the coffee houses uh, in Chicago too that that I. We've gone to, we've both gone to this place, and they used to do live music, but they don't anymore, unfortunately, but, but anyway, yeah. 
Yeah, we've been to the Beat Kitchen. Yeah. Or have you just been there? No, you and I are both. Well, we saw uh, Dan open for uh, Paul of Tampa. Right, that was Beat Kitchen, right. And, um, I've been there one I other like the time. Kitchen. It's cool. Seeing Dan show. But um, that makes me think that um, I always post our names on SoundCloud when I put in the synopsis of the different mm-hmm. episodes. And um, if I put Bill Telfer, Dave Zukowski, we consistently get a listener from Poland on there. And I wonder if it's just the name, because it's a, it's a very important the, uh, name in Poland. One of the uh, musicians I've recorded from Poland. I told you this story. Maybe. Um, he was. He apologized for his English not being very good, and I said, "Well, my English is horrible." Or I said, "My Polish is horrible for being Polish." And he said, "Oh, what's your last name?" And I told him. Oh, I think you did tell right, him. Right, and that's that's his wife's maiden name. So, I'm wondering if you know maybe that because we are all, all of us are connected on Facebook. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, stuff, and maybe yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe them. Yeah. Or could be. So I'd like to say hello to Ola and Mikolai if you're listening. <laughs> How do you say hello in Polish? Exactly. Did you hear the first part of this story? My Polish is horrible. It's not existent. Well, <laughs> I thought maybe I was gambling on its horribleness of being including the, the word for hello, but they don't know. <laughs> can you say goodbye? Can you say Oh, now listen, what, what is something you can say? Can you call him? Zukowski, that's it. <laughs> well, that's pretty... I thought maybe... Polska. 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 Yeah. That's it. Oh, okay. that's, that's, that's all right, that's all right. Oh, thank you so much. Mm-hmm. But, uh, my, uh, my dad was, uh, was Italian. And he, was, he was bilingual, completely bilingual until he was about four. Really? And then uh, they, oh, yeah. then the, they moved from Coal City to Joliet, and I think that uh, his his grandparents stayed. They didn't move to Joliet. I think his grandparents were mainly the ones who talked Italian around him. And as soon as he got away from that and started going to school, he completely lost. It. He remembered a few words, but he he completely lost it. Yeah, I forgot. See, you told me that he was years ago. totally bilingual. Yeah, that's. Really interesting. Uh-huh. It just shows you how the yeah. human brain develops. Mm-hmm. I've often thought that I should, you know, get one of those, learn to speak another language just to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like a Rosetta Stone or something. That's have you, have, to be have you ever used any of these? No. I would teach my. I, I never used one. I would use. I took Spanish for a number of years in high school and college. I took it. And when I was teaching kindergarten, I always used to, to do Spanish. I used to instruct them in Spanish right all through the year. I used to save it for the end of the year for a long time. I'd do like a crash course in Spanish. And then I just started doing it all year. It was amazing how and much those kids, some of those kids some would those really kids would jump really, into it. Really, hmm. really. I think it's an aptitude so, like And, and I, I think if you, um, I, I don't, I think it's harder to learn a language the older you get. I think, you know, when, you, when you're when younger, it's easier for you to pick it up, but you can always learn it. Never t- is, too late. There, is it a factual thing that it's harder to learn things the older you get? Yes. Is it? Why is and you can't it? teach an old dog new tricks? It's because, I, I know this because of my teaching career, they did a lot of, of brain research fairly recently. And this is probably things that people have known for a long time, that somebody decided to kind of, you know, put it all together and teachers used right, it a write lot. Write it down. Yeah, write it down. Um, it's that there are, there are certain times in your life when you're more prone to learning certain things. One of the things, this is digressing a little bit, but not that much, that they say about learning, being exposed to music at an early age and keeping music in